No. No, that's what I'm saying. It's okay. not validating an email at all. Well, like sometimes if I'm looking in and my username, for example, has to be an email address. Mm -hmm. And if I put in an email address that I was never registered, it would say invalid email address or password. It's telling you that it's an invalid email address in the sense that no one with that email address is registered for that site. Okay, so that's pretty much what it's Yeah, doing. that's different than saying that that's not a valid email address. In other words, mzeller is at lorraineccc.edu. Yeah. Uh, I don't have an Amazon account with that. Mm -hmm. My Amazon account is with my personal email address. Yeah. So if I went in and tried to log into Amazon at mzeller is at lorraineccc.edu, it's an invalid email address. It's not an invalid email address. It's saying that no one with that email address has registered for Amazon. So All right. they're querying against a local that there they would be querying up against their database on the web server to make sure that there's someone with that username. Essentially, in that case, you're using the email address as a username, making sure that that username uh, is valid. So you could do that for existing customers as well. If they say they have registered that information rights to the database, mm -hmm. yeah. and then you validate Then you validate database. up against that, yeah. But again, that's... That's not what's going on here. Right. All right. What's going on here is it's literally just validating the form of the email address, that it fits the right form. Now, this brings up an important point because client, or, or how do I want to put this? Validation can occur both on the client and the server side. All right. Keep in mind sort of the purpose of both client and server validation and the distinct characteristics of client and server-side scripting. All right. Let's say we are Amazon and we're checking out. And we have the address that you want to ship to, city, state, Zip. And we have a credit card number here, all right, in a text box. Chances are there will be two sorts of validations that occur here. There will be some validation that occurs on the client side and some validation that occurs on the server side, all right. What sort of validation do you think is going to appear on the client side? Just to make sure we use correct. What, what do you mean by everything? Let's, first of all, let's focus just on the, on the credit card number. What would be validated with that? 16 numbers. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It would validate, the client side could validate to make sure that, it, that, that this follows the valid rules for a credit card number, which is 16 numbers except for American Express, which is one more or one less? One more. Yeah, one more. Okay. All right. So the client side could validate, it could tell me that I forgot to put anything in there. It could tell me if I put in the number five as my credit card number, right? <laughs> I ain't that old, I have credit card five, right? It could tell me if I put in 65 digits in there, because that's not a valid credit card number. So it could validate to make sure I put in the right number of numbers, and it could validate that those are all numbers. Um, that is, I didn't put in my credit card as A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, whatever. All right. What? Go ahead. I was going to say, it also, I know that Visa and Mastercard cards probably start with the same four numbers. So it could validate that as it well. It possibly could validate that as well. Yeah. If, if, if that's something that, that is truly a rule, yeah, it could validate that as well. Yes. Would the validation rules change based on the card type selected? It could. Yes. It could. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Right, if, you, know. you know, a Visa MasterCard versus American Express. Or, or a PayPal account. Or it could be smart enough to know that this credit card number starts with a yeah, whatever. Therefore, is a MasterCard. Therefore, I will apply the MasterCard. Usually, they have the uh, radial selector right. or a pull down. To yeah, I think that's like I think that's an additional keeping you honest thing because it could. Either that or the program was lazy, because it could figure out the credit card type if it wanted to, based on the number. So the point is, is that client-side validation 
can do the sort of validation of does this look like a valid credit card number? All right. And the obvious ones, Fred, that doesn't look like a credit card number. <laughs> Eight, that doesn't look like a credit card number. Um, some 85 digit number doesn't look like a valid credit card number. What sort of credit card, what, can, what sort of validation can the client not provide? Valid account. Pardon me? A valid account. Is it really a valid account? Or is it just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you know, just some random digits? What else? I'm sorry, I said add, which was. Yeah, at, well, well, that's different. That's yeah, different. I said that might be a little it different. Because, yeah. you know, you can have, really you have an account right. that is valid but not active. Exactly. Right. It could be you suspended. Know, could be could suspended. Be old, yeah. yeah. Overdrawn. Yeah, over, you know, over the limit, uh, you know, uh, uh, reported stolen, yeah, right. you know, yeah. any number of things. Those kind of things can't be validated on the client side. So instead, they're going to get validated on the server side. Why can't those be validated on the client side? Well, the client wouldn't have the database to check against for one. The client doesn't have the resources available to check. All right? The client doesn't have, you know, how do I want to put this? You should assume as little as possible about the client. The client has a web browser that we know. Right, because they're browsing web pages, but clients certainly you can't. In fact, probably in very few cases will the client have say the 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 the, the programs and the applications necessary to connect to a database and query it. And if you think about it for a second, if it did, would you want them to be able to do that? No. <laughs> so even if it was technically feasible, even if you could come up with some scheme like, well, what about that? No, you don't want that to happen, right? So this is a, a more um, this is a more thorough sort of validation, all right? This is a, a more secure validation. We're not we're not exposing any secrets of the business by saying we're going to validate to make sure credits are sixteen digits, credit card numbers are sixteen digits long, right? Anyone that can count can figure that one out, all right? We're not even uh, um, if we if we look at the first couple of digits to make sure it's a certain couple of digits, that's not you know maybe people don't know it, but that's not really a secret. You could you could figure that out. But is it really a valid credit card number? Is it that's something that's secure? So keep in mind the client. The whole assumption with the client is it has a web browser and that's it. So it doesn't have any of these access to advanced resources like checking a database and so on. And even if it could, we wouldn't want it to do it. All right. Well, then that begs the question, why do we do client validation at all? Well, to take out as much of the work as possible. Yeah. To sort of, well, we do it because it's, a, it's truly a win-win situation. And I, I, I was thinking I could get through this without drawing my favorite diagram, <laughs> but that's not going to be. Remember, the way this works is the client makes requests to a server through the internet, and again, to our point, the only thing that we know about the client really is as a, a web browser. It does have access to the database or the financial services payment processing whatever we call it and we wouldn't want it even if it could so that kind of validation happens here so why do we do validation on the client side we do it because if we send a package to the client that includes HTML CSS and JavaScript if the client detects an error in the form data, that error message can be displayed instantaneously, and it doesn't have to send that data to the server for the server to figure out that, gee, you put in a 14-digit number instead of a 15-digit number, and then send a response back to it. So it's a win-win situation, right? It's a win situation for the client because they're getting an answer like that, all right? As soon as they enter something and it's invalid, because there's code to detect that that got loaded to the client, 
doesn't have to make a trip through the internet. Remember, this trip through the internet, even though we're talking about fractions of a second in some cases, or in some cases possibly longer, um, is very long compared to how fast instructions execute on a computer once those instructions get loaded. So we can provide the client with instantaneous feedback that, hey, that's not valid. Fred, is it a credit card number? Try again. All right. What's the win on the server side? How's the server side? It reduces the load on the server. OK, how so? You're not processing those requests. Yeah. You've got millions of customers on right. your server. That right. all adds up. The server isn't trying to process stuff that clearly isn't right, that anyone could tell is wrong, you know? Um, the analogy I give is like if you went and filled in a job application, right? If you went to somewhere and, and you asked the receptionist for a job application and the receptionist gave it to you and you went and filled out some stuff and handed it back to them. And the receptionist looked and says, well, look, you forgot this section of it and you didn't sign it and all that. Now, the receptionist probably doesn't have any idea do you have the credentials to do the job, right? They're just looking at it and saying, is there anything clear cut sticking out where you didn't, this doesn't look like a reasonable form, you know? You could put in that you went to, um, you know, um, you know, who, you could, you could say that you, you went to school at Hogsworth, all right, but they're probably not validating that, right? Now, later on, the, human resource person or the person that's interviewing her for the job is going to look for that and see, gee, is this, does this really make sense? Does the person really have the credentials? Kind of the same idea here. The client does a cursory check and the server does the more significant check. The client, though, can keep, um, the client side validation can keep obviously erroneous data from getting to the server because the server is only going to not be, is never going to be able to process it, right? You enter an order for Amazon without a credit card number, hey, it ain't going to go, or some means of payment, rather. I guess there's other, but assuming we're just talking credit card numbers. All right, questions about this. Can anyone think of a monkey wrench in this particular scheme? There is a monkey wrench in this particular scheme. Malware? Um, not that big of a monkey wrench. The only one I think of is really technical. Go. Where you start getting into your data types and uh, stuff like that. This is this is something that's that's that, that's even more simple, simplistic than that. Security questions. Oh, well, not, not even that so much. The monkey wrench I'm speaking of is anyone in the world can go in and turn off, through their browser settings, can turn off JavaScript. All right? Wow, so everyone's going to run the lab and log into their Amazon account <laughs> and try to order something and turn off JavaScript and put in Fred as their credit card number and see if it gets shipped to their house. Probably not, right? <laughs> I'm, guessing, I'm guessing that they have that loophole filled. How do they fill that loophole? Well, on the server side. Right, on the server side. So the point is, is very often there'll be actually redundant validation. You know, it's like the guy that wears suspenders and a belt, right? <laughs> redundant validation, all right? So the client-side validation is there, all right, uh, to make sure that, hey, if you're one of the 99.9% .9 of the world that doesn't know what turning JavaScript off even means, all right, and therefore never would even think to turning it off, the validation works as intended. The client gets the error, saves the server the load, client gets immediate feedback. If, however, you're trying, you know, for whatever reason, you've disabled JavaScript, then there'll be redundant validation on the server side. So very often, the same validation on the client side is going to fire off on the server side and, um, 
and, and catch any errors that happen to slip through because um, errors on the, uh, you know, uh, uh, what do I want to say? Um, uh, the client side had JavaScript disabled. Or even if there was some JavaScript browser incompatibility and a validation didn't fire off exactly the way you thought, whatever, all right? This is kind of the safeguard. Yes? I'm just wondering, um, would turning JavaScript off allow you to submit the form and force it to validate on the server side? Or is there some type of thing that would basically say I could, we can't process the form because JavaScript is not Or it might just depend on the site? Let me tell you what it could and couldn't do. All right. If you turn JavaScript off, you could still submit the form. Okay. All right. Unless in your server side code you took some sort of extraordinary means to prevent that from happening. Like, for example, if you had a server side script that looked to see if JavaScript was enabled, and if it wasn't enabled, you got rid of the button to submit it. All right, or something like that. I believe you probably could do something like that. All right? But if you turn JavaScript off then, that's going to have no impact on how the server is going to process it. So the validation, if it's written on the server side, will catch it. So turn JavaScript off, that's fine. The, the client side scripting won't catch the error, but the server side validation will catch the error, provided it's written. Yes. I don't know if this is even pertinent, but in my, in my old company, they used to um, check for JavaScript, and if it wasn't on, there would be a thing that would come up. The company knew what you had, what your environment was, and they'd tell you how to turn it on so you could get to the training lesson module and stuff. Yeah, you, you can do you can do things like that. Um, you, you know, you can you could uh, display. You know, there's a, there's a lot of things you could do um, based on whether they have JavaScript enabled or not. All right, it, 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 it's, it's a matter of how much effort you want to take to do that, you know. And in the case of validation, I would say I'll let them submit it. I don't care if they have JavaScript enabled or not, but I'm also going to validate it, you know. So, yeah, if it's someone that for what, you know, if it's someone that's trying to, that just has, happens to have JavaScript in, uh, enabled off, if they put in validate them, fine, I'll let them order my product. I don't care. If they have JavaScript enabled, though, and they're trying to, to, to game the system somehow by putting in bogus data, then my validation will catch it, so I don't really care. I'll let them submit it, but my redundant validation on the server side will catch it. Now, what's a dirty word for programmers? I used it a minute ago. Redundant. Redundant, right? Why don't we like redundant as programmer? Pardon me? It's more work. It's more work, right. And make you can make mistakes. If you have to do something twice, you have to make mistakes. Well, this is where, because Bill Gates loves you so much, <laughs> all right, that the .NET framework helps. Because those validation controls fire off both on the client and the server, all right? So they fire off redundantly, so you don't have to code redundantly. In other words, if I were to disable JavaScript, all right, those validation controls would run on the server. If, uh, if the user has JavaScript enabled, then they run uh, uh, on the client, the, the, the manner that we, we probably intended it to happen. But if the user has JavaScript disabled, the validation controls will run on the server. And that's really nice because then as a developer, I don't have to worry about coding two sets of things. All right. Now I will have to code the bit of making sure that it's not a stolen credit card number and making sure that it's a real credit card number and not the one that they saw the number in the ad and tried that one <laughs> or whatever. Right? I am going to have to code that, but I'm going to have to code that anyhow. That's more of a custom sort of validation, specific to the project we're working on, as opposed to a generic, do they have these fields entered right? Do those fields fit the right formatted data? 
and so on. That's a very mechanical thing, and that what is what largely the ASP.NET validators um, accomplish for you. Yes? So as long as it's an ASP form, it will just, uh, the server will automatically... The server will automatically repeat those, those validations. Now, in most cases, you know, who cares? You do the snippet of code here, you send it to the server, it repeats those validations. We're not talking extensive code here. A check to see if a text box is filled is trivial. So it's not like we're adding a lot of time to the process. Do you yes? know if that would be true if it was a, a Linux-based server? Well, Linux-based server doesn't run ASP.NET, oh, okay. so okay. all bets are off. Okay. In that case, if you're using, let's say, PHP, you would need to write client-side validation and then server-side validation to duplicate that. Now, there is one little catch, and I'm going to show you that catch now, if you do have client-side scripting off. And that is... Let's rewind for a second. Remember we got an error on this code when we had no validation, right? Why are we not getting the error now that we put the validation in? Why doesn't that code give me an error when I click submit? Simpler than that. Pardon me? Okay. It is. But if you remember before, when we had the val when we had no validation, we got an error. Let's let us go and do that. Let's get rid of the validation. So let's get rid of these two validations. So I'm going to run this. I'm going to put garbage in here. And I'm going to click the button, and boom, I get an error. All right? That's where we were at last time. I'm going to now go and I'm going to add validation to this. And I'll put in a compare validator. And I'm going to say the message must be numeric. And the type is a double. And The operator is going to be a data type check. So now I have that validation in there. I go and run this guy. And I forgot to put in what control we're validating. So that's not the kind of error I'm talking about. Control to validate is text box one. Okay, now I go and run this. So same thing, I haven't touched the code, notice. I haven't thrown in a try-catch or anything in there. I haven't touched the code. Yet, when I put in a value here, I click the button, 
I do not get that error. Question is, is why do I not get that error? It's a form editor <laughs> enters uh, nightmares. You, you're stopping at every one and making it be filled in correctly. And then it'll go to the next one and the next one and the next one. That, first of all, that's not true. Second of all, uh, that doesn't answer the question of why I don't get an error. Yeah, because it's stopping there in the first one. It's not going to the second one to check it even. Yes, it is. It's not, see? It, it, <laughs> it just did. It just did. The error message says <laughs> enter email. So the it checked. was valid. It, it's, it, you didn't say how many characters the email had. had RWE is not a valid email address. And the error message is saying not a valid email address. I know, but if you put in 2 at 2.com, it thinks it's a valid email address. Because it fits the rule for a valid email address. So it is validating it. So your statement that it only validates the first one is not true. Well, I should get a D for effort. The, and again, that's not even the question, does it validate them in order? The question is, is why don't I get the exception when I press this button? Yes. The code is to take the value of the text box, turn it into a double, and then square it. Well, I mean, it has to be a double before it can do that, right? Yeah, so but we saw a minute ago that we got an error when we did this. Now we do not get an error. But you got an error because you didn't have that validation. So what changed now that the validation's in place? It's But this code, but, but I, I think the class collectively is missing the point here. This code didn't change. So there's nothing in here that says, gee, if you didn't enter a number, don't do this calculation. Well, that, that's yeah, doing but it for you. It, is. it says it's, it's trying to use what you do. It hits the exception, and then once it hits the exception, it says um, it reverts back to whatever the validation message is instead of throwing the exception. It is true that .NET does things that you don't see in your code, but .NET doesn't change any of your code. So in other words, it doesn't like insert a try catch in here because there's a validation. But it's going to throw an error because it's not, the data isn't valid. But why doesn't this, why doesn't this cause a problem? So it's not, it didn't add anything? Does that add anything to my code? Can you please go back to the uh, Why would it be I'm sorry, I'm not Is it supposed to change the code? No. I don't see why it would. No, the, the, I, I have a feeling you guys are looking for a, a complicated answer to a real simple question. <laughs> of course. All right. Is it just not running the method at all? Thank you. This doesn't give an error because this code never runs. All right. Well, yeah, people were kind of skirting around this. And why doesn't this code not run? Part no. Well, in a way, in a very vague way, but it's more fundamental than that. Let me ask you this: Where does this code live? Lives on the server. All right. If we get a client-side validation error. Does it make it to the server? No. no. So, the answer to the question is, why doesn't this code give an error? Does it give an error? Because the client-side validation prohibited it from making it to the server to even try and run this code. So it's not like it's running this code and it's handling the exception or the validation is doing it and all that. It just plain ain't making it to this code. And again, if you want proof of that, we could go into debug mode, put a breakpoint in there. It's never going to hit that because it's not submitting it. We can also sort of observe that. Um, by, uh, 